Hello and welcome to Wolf Wisdom. This is a series where we dive deep into the world of dog technology and innovation. I'm your host, Matthew, and today we're exploring a pretty unique piece of technology, if I could say so. It's called the Halo Collar, and we're finding out why this GPS dog collar is considered a game changer. So joining us today is Justin Butts from Halo Collar. Justin, second time you're on here on Wolf Wisdom, and uh, great to have you back. Hey there, it's a pleasure to be back. Hope everything's going good on your end. Yeah, we're doing great, and I've had more time here with the collar, so I've got more experience. Last time I was kind of like, how do we do all this stuff? You know, But I, I, yeah. I think I figured most of it all out. But I know that uh, people watching this video today probably do have questions, and I thought it might be a great time to kind of revisit with you. So first off, I mean, the question I have is, I've, I've looked at a couple of different callers, and Halo to me really stands out. But just from your perspective, what makes Halo special? Great question. I think it's one of those things where once you get your hands on it and you start to actually use the collar, you'll really see that. Um, I wish that a lot of our users could see hand in hand how they work um, compared to others in the market. Um, the great thing about it is it's not really just a collar to protect your dog and prevent them from leaving, but it's also going to guide them back home as well with certain types of feedback, which you can also customize too. So you can always customize that feedback to fit your needs and your pet's needs. That's pretty unique because I haven't really heard anyone say that before, guide them back home. Because I think most of us think of it as it's a fence. It's a GPS enabled fence so the dog can't cross. But if the dog were to cross somehow, maybe it wasn't set up properly, maybe you're on a trip or something. Tell us a little bit about the guiding home aspect. That's pretty unique. With guiding the dog back, what I mean by that is they get the prevention feedback as they're leaving the fence. But once they go out and they turn around, that's when we got the encouragement feedback feature. That starts to play. It can be a, it's usually a whistle most times. Uh, by default, it's a whistle, but you can customize that to be anything that's really in the app. That sound is something that they start to associate with returning home as well. Right. Yeah, I have experienced and played around with the whistle a little bit. And that does actually, you know, but I've, I've never had them like just turn around and come back home. It's usually come to me. But I like that idea because what if I'm not there? You know, I could set up the whistle and it's come home. And I know that, you know, honestly, just I foster dogs. So I have a variety of different dogs that have been over to the house. But to me, I mean, it's always that treat. It's that best treat. It's the stinkiest, smelliest treat I can find. And the treat is only given, that treat, that treat is only given when they respond back, you know, to the whistle uh, and that command. So I, I know it really works, you know, for most dogs and, and most dogs that I've, you know, had the opportunity to foster are very food oriented, but uh, other dogs, maybe it's just praise and, and that's perfectly fine too. Um, so, Let's talk about, you know, the dog park, because you, you did mention the dog park, and I know it's pretty amazing. It's great tech support, but, but what are people saying in the dog park? What kind of reviews are people giving the Halo Collar? What kind of feedback are you getting? That's a wonderful question. You know, the, the dog park is a great place to come with any and all concerns, really. We get a range of questions like, hey, my cellular connectivity is acting a little weird and we may have to look into their area and see if the area is really covered that well. Or we could have some things of uh, along the lines about training that people ask. They'll come in and ask about training questions. It really is a wide variety of questions. I've worked uh, a lot of hours in that dog park and I've met a lot of wonderful customers. Um, it's definitely a great method and channel for support. I, I always like to say I encourage other companies to start using that type of thing. Uh, being able to share your screen and work through problems together like that, it's great. And putting a face to the name, and um, you get to see a lot of wonderful dogs too. And Justin, I know the collar, I mean, it's great. And it's one of these things where I keep learning about, oh, wow, it does that? I didn't even know. It's kind of like a, a smartphone or something. It's like, you know, it just seems endless with uh, all these different features. But I... Uh, no, there. I, I think you guys call them hidden features. <laughs> what, what's that all about? Right. Yeah. It's uh, once you get past that learning curve, you start to figure out things you didn't know were there. That happens all the time with our users. Um, one of the biggest highlights I've seen recently is people talking about the fitness 
or the activity levels of their dog. People are really curious. You know, what's my dog up to? Are they getting enough exercise every day? Are they just sitting around laying around all day? Well, Halo has statistics on that. So if you open up your pet card in the app, you can go in and you can check out their activity levels, uh, how many times they may have breached the fence or approached the fence. Anything like that is tracked, and you can see pretty much a score for your dog um, as well. And you can also look at the history of this. So, I mean, if you want to go and look at a year's worth of data, you can absolutely do that in the app. I mean, it's kind of like this thing right here on your watch, right? <laughs> yeah, how many steps absolutely. did your dog take? <laughs> yeah. And, of course, I mean, every dog in every situation is kind of different. I mean, everybody has their own unique reasons, I think, why they want the halo collar. You know, maybe they live in a wooded area. Maybe they live in a more urban area. Whatever it is that that's drove them to investigating the halo collar. Um, just in case people haven't really considered all the opportunities the collar offers in terms of protection and, and guidance to your dog, give, give us some unique situations that are out there. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. Every dog is different. So... That means they do learn at their own pace. Some of them can get this collar and understand what that feedback means in a week's time. Some, it might take that full 21 days or more. It's just how their brains are and also how effective training goes as well. Uh, one of my most interesting situations was uh, an older dog that had came into the dog park, not the dog themselves, but their owner. They came in, they'd ask, um, you know, my dog's a bit too old. I'm a little worried that they're not going to pick up on the training. Um, so I always like to refer back to a phrase I heard one of our founders say in a, in a customer demo. He mentioned that old dogs can learn new tricks. And that was absolutely the case in that conversation. The dog didn't end up catching on. I had to keep in touch with the, uh, the, the owner for a couple weeks. Um, they ended up learning it just fine. So that's great. I mean, it, it could be an older dog. It could even be, I think, you know, we had Anna on here last time and she kept saying puppies. <laughs> so I an age range i mean actually at all for this collar i mean certainly you probably you don't want a, a, a puppy or would a puppy be able to learn this right I, so when it comes to puppies and you know a minimum age requirement there is one we we typically recommend five to six months for training um, this is just due to dogs being younger than that age having a shorter attention span so they have a harder time soaking in what that training really means yeah. Um, you know, I know that uh, in the past we talked about setting up boundaries outdoors. We talked about how great the collar is in the wooded settings, you know, where there might not be great GPS, how there's 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 backup systems within the collar. But what about indoors? We haven't really even touched on that. Can you can you give right. us a little advice on how to use the collar indoors and if you even need to do that? That's great. You know, it's it is entirely up to the user. I have many people who take the collar off when their dog comes inside, but so many people do love for their dog just to wear the collar at all times. So you, while you can't build a fence inside of a fence with a collar, what you can do is you can place a beacon. What we have are these beacons that you can place inside yeah. the home. And it's sort of like how the fence works. Yep, you have one right there. Um, <laughs> it, it does the same thing. It'll just give you the warning and the boundary feedback. Um, so it's just missing the emergency feedback that the fence gives. Um, but you can place that on, on a couch if you don't want your dog to be on the couch or if you don't want them in a particular room, the kitchen, anything, you name it. You can use it inside. I, just keeping dogs out of the garbage can because I eat lunch, I throw it away, and my wife's like, why don't you take it upstairs? You can't leave your, you know, the, yeah. the beef there, though, sometimes, you know. But I don't want to have to haul upstairs, so that's that's good. So Justin, I know you are in the dog park, you're dealing with uh, customers, and you've been with Halo for a really long time. Anything that surprised you? Any kind of stories that pop into your head? Yes. So one of the main ones are the calls where the owner will have about 50 or 60 acres worth of land. And I'm like, that's so much land. How? What's going to happen in between your home and the edge of your fence? You know, uh, Users still use the collar with all that land and they'll end he up wanted to protect 50 acres. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. <laughs> I've definitely seen it before. Um, that's a really know, large fence. It tracks them all the way through too. And it, uh, a lot of people use that, you know, that have ranches or farms of that nature. Um, those are one of the things that stuck out to me that really surprised me. 
that's how big you can make that fence. In, in reverse, it can be a very small yard and the collar can also work as well. I mean, I, I have a very, very small, oddly shaped yard, mm -hmm. uh, but it's worked just fine. Yep, that's right. I, I remember me and you working together a while back and I took a look at your yard. It is indeed a small yard. We typically recommend at least half an acre. Uh, the fence does need to be at least 30 by 30 uh, in feet in size. Um, but yes, absolutely. We have so many people who you have what you would consider a smaller yard that use the collar regularly. And I think that is one of the things that uh, sets Halo apart from the other GPS enabled dog collars that I've looked at. They really do require much larger spaces. With Halo, you could get in just a little bit closer. And, you know, I, I always think of my friend who lives in an HOA and she has a very rambunctious Labrador retriever who smells a squirrel, who whatever, and it, it's a busy road on the other side. She, they won't allow her to raise the fence, but the GPS collar there has really worked like a charm. It, dog hasn't escaped anymore and she doesn't really have to worry about it. Well, Justin, super thanks again. It's always nice to see you and nice to check in with you on some of the developments of the Halo Collar. If you are considering this Halo Collar, I'd encourage you to click in the link below in our description, give you a little bit more information about the collar and the possibilities. Any questions you have about the collar, we monitor comments here in this video. So go ahead and put the comments in and we'll be sure to address those on a future video and also we'll surely get a reply to you right away. So again, thanks to Justin. Thank you for watching Wolf Wisdom. Keep those tails wagging and we'll see you next time.